Bloody nail gang. Yeah. Y'all know what's going on. Hey. Long live my brother, nigga. Hey. D nail gang, nigga. Hey. That money calling you hating too loud, so you can't hear it. Me and my niggas caught some cases, we still in the we trenches. I lost D nail, bro. I can't lie, I need you right Long here with me. Brother. And I've been stepping around the city, so these niggas fear me. That money calling you hating too loud, so you can't hear it. Me and my niggas caught some cases, we still in the trenches. I lost D nail, bro. I can't lie, I need you right Long here with me. And I've been stepping around the city, so these niggas like fear me. Said, bitch, I'ma get richer, die trying. And fucked up my young and wanted to be rich, but die slime. Niggas my cat boy, tell the truth, them pussy niggas die. I can't go out like no pussy nigga, I'ma die fire Yeah, that's the, yeah Oh shit, what's good YouTube, I need to see y'all boys there Re-Rock Tactical here With them things But we not talking about this thing right now We talking about this thing So I'ma put this down Alright YouTube, it's your boy Re-Rock Tactical I'm back with another video, man I'm starting a series, you feel me, on How I build my guns and how I get my guns to run good when I build them. So today, we gonna be talking about how I got this micro AR pistol to run flawlessly. I'm talking about like, y'all probably think I'm capping when I say flawlessly, but like, real flawless. First thing first, gun not loaded. This is my show gun for when people come over, you know, flex on them. They're like, yeah, look at this. Gun ain't loaded. This is my show gun, but I do take it to the range. Cause it turn heads, all that. And if I do need to use it for use it in a defense situation, I want it to run good. So it ain't just for show, but it's for show. You get what I'm saying? So, as I said before, going clear, everything clear. Oh yeah. Let me know if y'all focus the merch too long. Uh, start dropping. So, it's five things I did to get my micro AR plus the micro buffer tube to run flawlessly. Five things I did. All right, boom. We're gonna go to step one. The first thing I did, you gotta get you a, a good boat. You can't get a cheap boat when it comes to a little AR like this. Well, I would say you can't get a cheap boat when it comes to any guns, but some guns you can't get a cheap boat. But a gun like this, this short, you definitely need, you definitely cannot get a cheap boat. So I went and grabbed me a boat. I can't say what boat I grabbed because I guess. They can say that's me trying to sell a gun or whatever. So I went and spent like, I think it was 186 on the boat. The price I paid for the boat was the same amount as I paid for the complete upper the first AR ever built. So I had a feeling that it was gonna be boom. So you gotta get a good boat because I feel like it's gonna be heavy on the extractor because it's so little, all the gas can't go down the barrel and the blowback. And I know the extractors be breaking on these. It's definitely on a 7.62 they are. But on some micros, I have seen extractors break. So, quick fix. Get you a, a good bow carrier. You need a good bow carrier, bro. All right, the second step I did. After I went and got a good bow carrier, I went and got me some trigger sprints, some uh trigger pins, anti-walk trigger pins. Because... I don't know why. It's a Spikes Tactical Lower. Cover up all that good stuff. It's a Spikes Tactical Lower. So it ain't a cheap, cheap lower, but it's cheap. But I'm at the range shooting it, the pins were walking out, walking out, walking out. So I got trigger walk pins. And the guy at the gun range talking about it's because of the recoil from the gun, but the gun has no recoil to me. Like, I post the videos, you think it has recoil, that's on you. Boom. Upgrading my trigger pins to anti-walk pins. Haven't had a problem since. Third thing I did. Now this was much more for appearance rather than function because I've seen a lot of videos and people were saying these didn't function good. So I went and bought this 3.5 inch buffer system off mcsgear.com. I went and bought this and I, done, I did a little research. People were saying it's gonna jam, it's not gonna work. Yada, 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 all this and that. So me, I like to figure out stuff for myself. So first thing I did when I got it, I put it together, how the paper shape put it together. And every time I charge the handle, it will get stuck where I will hear the spring scraping on the boat carrier plunger. I mean, the boat, not the boat, the buffer tube plunger. I kept hearing the, when I charge it, I will hear these springs. I don't know how, cause it's, 
the thing goes inside of here. I'm thinking that it's gonna be back here, but it's a boat carrier insert when it comes with this. So it goes inside your boat. And when you charge it, it'll sometimes get stuck on the boat carrier plunger. Just like when you're shooting. So I go shoot it, one shot, jam, one shot, jam, one shot, jam. So I say, okay, so I come home. This is how I got mine to work. Take this off, right? Boom. Get everything situated. So, first things first, D, can you see how oily I got that? How oily I got all of those? So I'll run this part with. Now you don't mind my hands. I just got done washing dishes and this is like a dead skin. This is from building guns. I built about five or six ARs. This is what happens. So yeah, boom. So first thing I did, came home. I instantly took out that right there, the boat carrier plunger, okay? And then I realized I didn't have this on far back enough. Like if you can look in here and see, let me try to adjust it for you. I'm gonna have to take the upper off. You can look in here and see, you see the boat carrier, you see the boat plunger right there? That's where the boat plunger goes, that stops. That's where the buffer plunger goes. Sorry, keeps on the boat plunger. That's where the buffer plunger goes, that stops the buffer, the buffer spring from going in. So I took that out, right? And then what I realized, these wasn't back far back enough so it would have enough room to come all the way back. So what I did was, I grabbed my armor's tool, Grab my armor's wrench. You get you one of these. Let me back up. Get you one of these. Work flawless. Put it on there. And I took this off. So you take that off. And then you only thread it until right, until like the first or second thread right in front of the plunger hole. I know you might think it sounds weird, but right there, that's all you need because it's going to allow the, the boat to push the carrier all the way back, all the way back, all the way back, all the way back, all the way back. When you put it on the second, one, two, the second thread before the buffer, which remember that second thread. And that'll also give you room to put this on the right way without needing a skinny, a very skinny armor's wrench. So that's the third thing I did. I bought this. And then I immediately took out the plunger and ran it like that. Next day, I went to the range. I promise you, I bought two boxes of the, the, the 150 round 5.56 five, and I bought two boxes. They were $101 a piece. I shot all 300 rounds. Not one stop, not one failure feed, nothing. It ran flawlessly. Boom. So I said, okay. Then I realized after 300 rounds, this thing gets so dirty because it's only a five inch barrel. I don't know if that's why. I'm just telling you my assumptions. I'm not a, feel me, I don't know too much about these things. I'm learning just like you guys learning, but I'm just telling you what helped mine run perfectly. So this right here, this just gets, this is the fourth step now. This just gets so caked up, so dirty, so fast. And like, when I say so caked up, when I say so caked up, so dirty, so fast, this right here has so much just dirt all around it, all in it. So yeah, I cleaned this up. Cleaned this, got some uh, CLP, the spray kind. Sprayed it on there, cleaned it, then put a drop of oil, a drop of lube on there, cleaned it, made sure it was a little boom. Did that to, make sure you do that to the little crush washer too. Now with this, this spring, I don't know why, but this spring, I don't know if it's just my spring, but it likes to stick. I can hear it. I you know it's, it's, it's pretty dirty because like I said, we just left the range, but she's still oily. So it ain't that much dirt as oil. But this would get so dirty, the recoil spring that goes inside the buffer, it would get so dirty and I would hear it. You could hear the springs like cling, cling, and cling, cling, and cling, cling, but it was still charged. So I'm like, oh, okay. But that's because I ran it bone dry, nothing on it. 
So I lube this. All right, and I don't know if you can see, but there's also a little spring back there as well. I put lube on that because this goes in. You can probably can't do it by hand, but when the gun goes off, that pushes in. You hear this pressing up against it, like tink, tick, tick, tick. So what I did is got my spray, spray twice, two, two, two sprays, and I took my little brush. Took my brush, shoved it in there, the little part, and I just, you know, washed those springs, try to get all the love, everything I could off the spring, everything I could off the spring. And I also wash, well not wash, but like clean those threads in there as well. So I have to clean this, oil this as well, because this is not a bolt. Cause like I know you can just leave your regular buffer tube spring. I never cleaned that on any of my ARs and they always ran fine. But with this one, I see that you have to clean this. It just throw it in the maintenance of the gun. I don't know if you have to, but since I'm breaking it in, I thought I had to. I'm about 500 shots in on this now. This whole little micro buffer tube thing, I'm about 500 shots in on this. And with the whole gun, I'm about 1,800 shots in. So yeah, she's been running fine. She hasn't failed since the first, the first shot I ever took. It was just a fair to feed. I was running an H1 buffer. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt. Because I was running an H1 buffer. Let me go ahead and get this back installed. So I'm installing it. You want to make sure this spring goes inside of here. On here. Push it all the way down. Grab your, put your upper back on your gun. Grab this. And when you insert it, you want to make sure because it goes inside the, you see the tube back there? It goes inside your bolt. This right here goes inside your bolt. I don't know if you can see the wear on there. I have been firing this thing, but this goes inside your bolt right there. So you want to make sure you get it in there. And you're going to hear it go in there like that. It just dropped in there. See? So now it just dropped in there. You just put a little bit of force. Twist, 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 twist. Some people say use Loctite right here, but I just don't think it's a good thing because if something fail, you gotta get your gun off. I don't know how you get this off with Loctite. I mean, I don't, I don't really know, but. Try this perfectly. That's the fourth thing I did. Now, the fifth, and final thing I did was I added lightweight springs on my trigger and my hammer. I know it's gonna sound weird. I'm thinking about throwing a drop in trigger in here, but this mill spec trigger runs so flawless. But I have a PSA drop in trigger on my 762, which I wanna do a video on next. And it makes me wanna say, fuck this. What I did was trigger spring, hammer spring. <laughs> and it runs like a champ. And a lot of people were saying, oh my God. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm the strongest man in the world, but you guys have to be weak because I was shooting this thing and it literally was just like this. I promise you, like this. This the most recoil I had. Like if I were to cheat this, if I were to cheat this and hold it firm, I promise you, this would not move. But, it's gonna wrap up today's video. Just five quick things on what I did to make my AR, my five inch micro AR run smoother, run flawless. Like, I like, all right, I've had about six mags loaded up because I wanted to see how she ran when she was hot. I magged up all six rounds. I mean, I magged up all six mags. Then had the 60 round mag, slapped it in and shot the whole 60 round. I was like shocked because I, be, I come from building cheap guns. I'm, this is not a cheap gun. To me, it's not a cheap gun. I built this myself. I'm like 1,300 deep all together in, on this one. But we're going to talk about that in another video. This is just five, my five tips to make your AR-47 run better. Get a good boat. If you've got this on here, my only tip for you is take out your boat plunger. I mean, take out your... 
I'm new to this YouTube shit, bro. Bear with me. Take out your buffer plunger. Buffer plunger detent. Take that out. You don't need that. Back this out some so it's at the second thread right before the hole. Second thread. And then tighten this down as far as you can. You can stake it if you want to. That's on you. Tighten it down as far as you can. And I promise you, nice oil. Your gas block. I make sure my gas block is tight every time I shoot it. Make sure your gas block is still. You shouldn't have no problems. That's just me for the five inch micro AR. So, it's my five inch micro AR built with the hunting around. Like I said, this is not a defense gun. This is a YouTube gun. I built this for YouTube because it draws views. And so, like, in my house, it literally just sits on my dresser. Like, people walk in, damn, bro, that's nice. It's not loaded, as you see. Not loaded. I have clips that's loaded in case I do need to. But my home defense gun is always loaded, so. I would hate to shoot this in the house. Cause I shot this on New Year's. I had a headache for three days. Couldn't go to sleep the day I shot it. I definitely understand why you guys say you're gonna need to double up on air protection, but got a flash can on there. Flash can run flawless. Red dot, flip up sights. So yeah, it's my five inch micro AR pistol build. And these are the five tips to make your five inch bust. You hear me do that? Oh damn, my daughter called me. I gotta go be a dad. Let me put this shit up. I love y'all YouTube. Keep like coming on my shorts. Throw all my haters. I love y'all too. Here I come. Jesus. Y'all boys be smooth.